So, okay. So the other thing is, and I wanted to chat a little bit about is although the Tampa mob, you know, not big numbers, very strong, mm -hmm. had a very low incidence of informants. Yeah. Um, and I would love to know, like historically, you know, like not mm -hmm. from like, the beginning. Um, why do you think that is? Well, Tampa up until even into the 1960s was a very small town. Everyone knew each other. Uh, yeah. It was very difficult to bring in an operative outside the family or outside Tampa into that. Um, I mean, there were some informants, but real low level. And if you look at some of the FBI documents from the 60s, not really a lot of actionable intel. You know, yeah. oh, I saw this guy or this guy knows this guy kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, I talked to some FBI agents. I talked to some uh, Florida Department of Law Enforcement agents who who had informants who sent people in. It just wasn't productive. Uh, they were very tight lipped. They were very careful who they dealt with. They were very, um, you know, especially guys like Traff County, that that older generation in general. But you didn't really see that level of um, of interest by the mob to use law enforcement. Another thing was that you know the Tampa FBI too really wasn't as well equipped to deal with organized crime. Uh, they, they had some great agents who, who definitely worked it and gathered a lot of in, information. Um, but it, you know, the real focus was even, you know, Marcello was even, even a bigger focus for the justice department at that time than, than traffic County. Yeah. But yeah, if you look, there was never a turncoat until John Mamone in the, you know, 2000 and he, his information was strictly related to, you know, one crew in Miami. So, yeah, there, there's, there's a, there's a paucity of, of turncoat. There's no Sammy Gravano of Tampa. So. Yeah. yeah. Now, um, uh, Benny Binion, as I understand, had a relationship with the guys from the South, including Sano Trificante. Can you speak to that? So, yeah, I've seen some tangential links. So th there are some links between guys that operated out of Dallas, like James Dolan, R.D. Matthews, especially. So R.D. Matthews, who was Binion's right-hand man, worked for Traficane in Cuba in the casinos. Uh, Lauren Hall was another one, a, a Dallas-based guy that worked in the casinos in Cuba, knew Traficane. So Traficane knew some of the Dallas figures. He knew um, uh, Savella. Uh, and then through Traficane's ties with Carlos Marcelo, yeah. and Marcelo knew all those guys. So, yeah, I, I think they, they all – you know, hung around together. And even though Binion wasn't really active in Cuba, you know, I think Traficante knew him through a lot of those familiar and, you know, associations, those guys. Interesting. Um, yeah. And uh, one other thing real quick yeah. too on that is Joe Campisi, who was supposedly had taken over after Savella died. Um, yeah. There were ties with him, with Marcelo, but also with, with Traficante back in the day. Interesting. So, you know, again, I always look at like, you know, formidable business leaders, calls and Nostra leaders. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because one of the things on the calls and Nostra side is I see a weakness when it comes to exit strategy and succession strategy, mm -hmm. right? You know, from, from Gambino to Castellano kind of didn't go so great. Um, you know, some of the bigger families that like, you know, New Orleans, you could go on where like once that kind of great leader died, had a steep decline. Um, who took over after Traficante and like what was his succession plan and who took over after he passed? So um, the person at law enforcement, all law enforcement pointed to as the successor of Traficante was Vincent Lascalzo. And um, yes, he was right. supposedly the guy that took over and he's still around. He's still in Tampa. Yeah. Yeah. Um, never been convicted of a serious crime. Um, retired for all intents and purposes. Yeah. He's, there's no, no, nothing for him to be a boss of anymore. Yeah. Um, but, you know, there wasn't a really great succession plan. And, I, you know, the, the thing about Tampa is they they faded away, not necessarily because of law enforcement. Yeah. They kind of just faded away. And a lot of that was attrition. And a lot of that might have been the exit strategy is, hey, let's start. Because you start seeing, especially in the 90s, these guys are going into like bank fraud and then, yeah. you know, legitimate business. And the sons are not going into organized crime. They're they're buying up property and they're going into legitimate business. In fact, there's there's a couple of guys that are still around.